Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Nia and I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And here it comes, here it comes just as predicted. The salt continues to flow over Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, always comparing it to Ghostbusters 2016. Media outlets are giving their uh, hot takes on the movie. Apparently it was shown at New York Comic Con. Oh yeah. Uh, I did not realize that they were allowed to review it yet. I thought there was a because it's not coming out for a while. Well, yeah, it was, and they showed it over at uh, that one video con too in in Vegas. Oh yeah, the the theater CinemaCon. CinemaCon. Yeah, so you know, lots of people have seen it. Now, I'm sure it's not going to please everybody, but if you look at what their complaints are, it's mostly that it's it's uh, negating. 2016. That's writing 2016 out of for existence. For a lot of people, that's a plus. Yeah, for a lot of people, that's a plus. Um, so we're gonna we pulled a couple of uh, really particularly nasty reviews up. So we One can from we can have some good laughs. Vulture and the Guardian, and uh, you know we'll we'll talk about this. Uh, how they're very very upset that Ghostbusters 2016 has been written out of existence. And when they had the reviews for Ghostbusters 2016, when people would bring it up and say how it's nothing like the original, you can't compare it. That's You're just talking about the original and about sexism and not talking about the actual content as they turn around and do the exact same damn thing. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rant scads over 237,000 subs. Thank you for the support. We do talk about movies, talk about pop culture. We talked about Ghostbusters. We've been talking a lot about Ghostbusters Afterlife because we both want to see it. Mm -hmm. Even my mom wants to see this movie. Uh, this movie, regardless of you know quality, and I think it's gonna just like anything else, it's subjective. Mm -hmm. We it's, don't know. It might be suck for it, all we it know. Might, it might suck. You know, it might it might be suck. It might be suck. It might be suck. That that should be on a shirt. After I said that, all I keep thinking in my head is when you go sucky sucky five dollar. <laughs> How is the movie? It might be suck. Okay, um, <laughs> that's good. It might be suck. Anyway, um, well, I love that though. I love that. That's our new cat. I'm Check. tired. Is this is this movie gonna be any good? I don't know. It might be suck. Yeah, so. I really don't know. It might be suck. Let's go. Um, anyway. I've actually heard from people that have seen it that the movie actually is pretty good. Mm -hmm. It is a res Hoping. respectful homage. Um, they've tried everything. They've tried, you know, uh, throw up playing the uh, the gender card. They were like, oh, the man babies were just angry. It was women in the lead. And it's like, I yeah. didn't like it either, and I'm a woman. Yeah, who's the lead character in this movie? Uh -huh, a girl. A little girl? Yeah, yeah. Um, so here we have the guardian and you look at their criticism and it's mostly it's, it's negating 2016. It's, it's gloriously salty. It's so fun. We have to look at it. Yeah. It's making its rounds on Twitter cause it's so over the top. Coming from the guardian ghostbusters afterlife review, a slimy stinking corpse of a sequel. Jason Reitman takes over his father's franchise and immediately tanks it with a totally misjudged blend of pandering fan service. And bizarrely played straight spectacle. Well, you could have said the, first, the, the last one, 2016, when the fans didn't want it, you know, immediately tanked it with a totally misjudged blend of pandering agenda service. Vagina jokes. And, yeah. Man, yeah. All, every dude in that movie was either stupid or an asshole. Oh, God. Um. So, yeah, this is at New York Comic Con. I did not... I did not uh, realize that the review embargo had been lifted. Mm -hmm. Apparently it has. Apparently. I, they were told not to spoil anything, but they're like, it's too, it's too straight laced. It's too straight laced. I want to, I want to skip down to this part here. Uh, they're talking about, you know, Spengler family and they're spoiling everything, by the way. It's pandering all the way down. The shocking part being the variety of Reitman's ploys. It's not all groaners like a cop offering a jail for the night, Trevor, the phone and asking, who are you going to call? That actually sounds like fun. There's the set piece with cutesy, nattering mini stay puffs, scratching the itch for cloying mischief makers planted by the minions. Consider the casual cowardice of a script that uses its own mythology to subtly erase 2016's All Gals reboot from the canon, giving the rage-choked trolls carpet-bombing IMDb with zero-star ratings, the vindication they've always craved. Hey, I'm interrupting you for a minute. A couple things. The casual cowardice. Well, actually, I think that takes a lot more bravery to go and undo the one thing that they knew the media would have a shit fit, like this person over. 
doing it, you know, and because they're trying to make the fans happy. Rage choke trolls, carpet bombing IMDb. Meanwhile, uh, I guarantee they're going to put this review up on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I'm sure that the, the media and the people who, who like 2016 and are mad about it are going to flip and review bomb this film. And we've seen it before. You can review bomb things to the good as well, which we've seen with Captain Marvel. We saw it with 2016 Ghostbusters. We saw it with the She-Ra show. I mean, a review saying, yay, lesbians, is in a review. Um, I would like to see, I'm thinking like Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, or The Brack Show. We mm -hmm. could have the she Show, and she could be a talk show host. There you go. And that could be the tagline, yay lesbians. Yay lesbians. <laughs> Welcome to um, the she Show, yay if, lesbians. If they were having their way, that would be something like that. But, you know, everything that was said here can be flipped to the other way. Everything. Even the championing of a scientific expertise comes off as overreaching and aggrieved from Gruberson's declaration, that, that would be Paul Rudd's character, uh, declaration that science is punk to the smug superiority of the pint-sized Phoebe. The message is clear, um, as, as are its intended recipients. There's nothing more powerful or important or cool than being a nerd. Right, right, because, you know, the last movie, when they had their science project and sing, song and dance number, there was nothing contrived about that. Or the fact that everyone's a scientist except for a black woman, there was nothing contrived about that. Oh, That's God. so much more science based. There's a they talk about the original Ghostbusters showing up. Spoiler, we already know that because the toys they already have mm -hmm. toys of like I was looking at the Bankman toy the other day. There's a disturbing sense of ownership over the past in Reitman's continuity building. His dad made the first movie, of course. Also, he Dan Aykroyd is involved in this. Dan Aykroyd oh. and Hilde Ramis are the ones who wrote it. Yes, I'm sure there's some ownership. There's a certain sense of ownership in this dipshit review who's just pissed because they think that 20, one movie, one of the Ghostbusters movies out of all the Ghostbusters anything, should be the one that everybody should universally love. But they don't, and they're salty about it. How dare he? As if he's the heir apparent and entrusted with sacred text rather than a guy running roughshod over the memory of a movie still a staple of middle school sleepovers for its laugh quotient. Perhaps oh, he's just jealous because he what? never got invited to a middle school sleepover. Perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps it's appropriate and telling that the 2021 incarnation of an 80s artifact would be imbued with all the issues most endemic to the current studio release. Here we can find a damning summary of modern Hollywood's default mode, a nostalgia object drained of personality and fitted into a duly palatable mold, custom made for a fandom that worships everything and respects nothing. Oh my God, it's the Scolari brothers. <laughs> well, no, but everything you said here, you can argue for 2016. <laughs> and now everything this person's getting bent out of shape over. Get your panties out of your ass and stop acting like a baby. You know what? You For all you think you're shit, you're everybody else. You're doing the exact same thing, but it's okay when you do it. It's yeah. like, you know, I don't even know if it's going to be good yet. It might be. It, it might, might be, not be it good. Might, it might suck. I don't know. But they're gunning for it before. This is kind of like the Snyder Cut, too. They were so pissed that the Snyder Cup got made because they they were delighted that for years they could hold that over nerds' heads and be like, you're never going to get the Snyder Cut. You're never going to get it, nerd. It's all about this us This is now. salty journos having their own meltdown. But it's it's completely okay. Don't you notice that when when, when something they love isn't, doesn't go the way they want, it's okay if they have a meltdown. It's okay if they review bomb. It's okay if they whine and scream and call her by names. But you're not allowed to do it to them. Say salty, bitch. God, they talk about the fans who are presumably being given what they want after the turmoil. So this is coming from Vulture. Again, I want to point out again, Vulture and Guardian. Yeah, right. When this was announced, what people were mad about wasn't that it was all women like you keep making it out to be. They were just like, why do we need another one? It was already done so well. We don't need another one. The reason we're getting this one is because they're trying to make their money back and they're trying to, to you know, rinse the palate of the shit show that was 2016 Ghostbusters. For all the turmoil surrounding Paul Feig's female-led Ghostbusters 2016, which for all its weaknesses was a shambling comedy that's shambling is about right. Closer in spirit to the original Ghostbusters than Afterlife. I doubt that highly. While Afterlife is technically female-led, it seems unlikely to stir up the same kind of misogynistic wrath, in part because it's less intent on branding itself this way, and in part because it's so outrageously deferential to what it believes they want. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> it doesn't brand itself that way? Wait, wait. So, like, 2016, where basically they went around telling everybody if they didn't like it, they were misogynist. This one doesn't do that. Is that basically what you just said? And you think that's a bad thing? They might be right. At a surprise screening of the film in New York Comic Con last weekend, the crowd cheered regularly at every bit of fan service. 
Um, because they like it. It's something they, they want. Like it. Wait, so you're just telling me now that the fans was made for like it. So what I've learned is they're allowed to whine. It doesn't have misogyny thrown around like crazy, and the fans liked it. Oh, how dare they? This is awful. I love this. This this last line is such such salt. Such salt. It's a river of salt. I hope it makes a billion dollars because if you're gonna sell your soul, you might as well get something in return. Whoa, whoa. What is it called the last movie? They, this is, it was a cash grab. It was a cash grab <laughs> on a dead franchise and it didn't work. Oh. You know what? 2016 glorious. got erased. Most, the majority of people didn't like 2016, not just in the US, globally, not just men, women and non-binary people didn't like it either. Get the fuck over yourself. I'm not sorry, mom, because these people are just full of shit. But this, you're doing the exact same thing you accuse everybody else of doing. It is no different when you do it. NME. Ghostbusters Afterlife first reviews praise the winning new cast. But it's Paul Rudd, so I'm sure at least Paul Rudd's good. The pandering fan service holds it back. Oh, this is great. This is great. Um, so Denny Geeks review said it was like the force awakens and how it covers a lot of, uh, familiar plot to the originals, but that the new cast elevates what could have been a tired retread. Basically look for all this talk of it being a retread Ghostbusters 2016 was basically beat for beat Ghostbusters. Yeah. This is even in New York. Yeah. Like New York was itself a character in the movies. The fact that they're not even having it there already makes it something completely different. Uh, according to Den of Geek, it's a virtue that when Ghostbusters Afterlife ends, it leaves you wanting more. The past is sweetly honored, including by a uh, delicate handling of Ramus's passing. But for the first time in nearly 40 years, another generation can... Ha! For the first time in 40 years, another generation can finally claim Ghostbusters as their own, whether they realize they're supposed to laugh or not. Again, 2016 completely stepped over. Mm -hmm. Completely stepped and, up. I, I, why is it so bad if you have a movie that has been kept around for years by the fans that you make a movie that fans like? What's so bad about that? I don't understand. <sighs> Despite criticizing the film's tendency to pander, Forbes was similarly positive about its winning new protagonists and strong dialogue. So they're going to be salty. Not everyone was positive. The Guardian. Oh, the Guardian was ridiculous. Um, that guy needs a new diaper. Yeah. I, I mean, this is... The, the, you wait. This movie comes out if the the word of mouth is good. And from what I've heard, you know, from people on Twitter, they've actually actually seen it. It's actually a very good movie. Is it as jokey as uh, the first two Ghostbusters movie? No. But they said there is a lot of fan service. But they're also, you know, this is a studio trying to win the fans back. Ghostbusters is a damaged brand. And this could be what The Mandalorian was to... Star Wars, mm -hmm. where it won back people that were really jaded. I'm sorry, from... but 2016, when you go about pandering to fans, they are pandering the hell out of 2016 to certain groups, mostly Twitter. And it didn't go the way they expected. Maybe if you actually make a movie that appeals to fans, you'll get your money back and your fan base back. I mean, I don't understand why it's so hard to understand. Why, are, why? Maybe that's why Hollywood's failing so bad. Maybe why these media outlets are failing so bad. They, they, they forget that the reason that if you're making something new, that's completely different. That's a completely different argument. But if it's something that's established like this, you have to appeal to the fans because they're the ones that are coming back and bringing their kids and making a whole new generation of fans. It's just common sense. They well, I can't expect that out of some some of these people. They don't have that. I mean, yeah, this is this is the thing. It's the the salt at the end of the day. Just like the Snyder cut, just like the Mandalorian bringing Luke Skywalker back mm -hmm. as proper Luke. Uh, and, and sort of, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, Disney sweeping the sequel trilogy kind of under the rug in favor of the Disney plus shows, the media is losing, they're right. losing and they're losing their shit. And the thing is they wouldn't do these things. They wouldn't sweep this stuff under the rug unless they, the majority of people globally didn't agree with them. I yeah. mean, if, if, if it was beloved over the globe, we'd be getting a Ghostbuster sequel to 2016 with those women. It wasn't. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to tell you. You know what? Just because you liked it, you're allowed to like it. That's completely cool. You know what? My daughter likes it. And that, yeah, yeah that's fine. To. She's allowed to like it. That's fine if you like it. But you know what? Then do what you tell everybody else to do. Go watch that one. As we tell everybody else when you try to ruin stuff. They're making this to appeal to the fan base because globally, 2016 did not. Yeah. 
There's no other way to put it. I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings. The truth sucks sometimes. At the end of the day, it's all about the money. And Sony wants a Ghostbusters franchise. There's talks about them having a Ghostbusters like cinematic universe. And you're not going to get that with 2016. Now, here's the thing. We said this before. You know, this could just be kind of the gate. Like, if this does really well, they might actually go back and be like, okay, let's let's do 2016 or, or reference that movie again and make it like a multiverse or some shit No, like don't. That. If you're smart, you won't. If you're smart, you won't. But we know these studios aren't But I smart. love it. When they're salty, it's okay. You're allowed to say anything. But when, when but you know, if, other, if fans are salty, then they dance all in it and put, you know, man, baby, tear mugs. And, of course, it's only men who, who hate this. I, I, I get this all the time. Because men. Stop being a misogynistic troll. Women and non-binary people didn't like it either. Gonna wrap this one up. Yep. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. And it might be terrible. And if it is, we will be honest. Oh, no. I, the More entertaining than the movie is gonna be the circus around I know. I can't wait. I'm very excited about wait. it. I'm so happy about I can't this. wait to see all the hit pieces. I hope this movie, uh, one, I hope it's good. I mean, if it's not good, then whatever happens, happens. If the movie is good, if it's everything the fans actually wanted, I hope it makes a billion dollars. I hope it makes more money opening weekend. Just send a weekend. message. Just to send a fucking message. Like, and if you hear it's good, go. Yeah. Because the only way that it's going to get through to these dumbasses and these media morons is if you if you actually go. If this movie makes three times what Ghostbusters 2016 did opening weekend during a pandemic. Hell, even if the movie's not good, everybody should go to make sure it makes three times more than yeah. Ghostbusters 2016. For no other reason than think of the out, think of the fallout from places like Vulture and The Guardian. It's going to be entertainment for hours. Oh my God, months, months, months of shrieking about how, how could this horrible movie make so much money? Oh my God, you pandered to the fans and they rewarded you with their money. It's not about the money. It's you're about all, the messaging. Every single fan ever is a toxic man baby. Ah, oh God. I, mm, it's making my nipples hard thinking about it. Why do you do that? All nine of them. Please don't. <laughs> We're going to wrap this yes. up. Yes. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye.